One question I get from my customers is sometimes they have tr problems twisting the chain. Sometimes it might appear twisted slightly like this and it gets a little wonky. And sometimes it'll appear like this after they chained. Well, there's a solution and this is how I always handle it. See right here? You see right here where it seems to twist? See, you can see the top front, but the side, you can see the bumps. That happens when you chain and you're chaining and chaining and then the chain gets so long and then you have to yarn over. And that's what happens. So to get around this, you have to follow your eye. Keep your eye. When you start looking at your eye, keep your eye where your, where your crochet hook is. Now make sure it's tight. Twist and join, that is. So keep your eye. I'm going to do this very close. Pretend the camera is your eye. Start with your eye. Go very slow. Gently turn your left hand to make sure, like this. Oop, see how it twists with your eye. Keep your eye down. Oop, it twists again. Oop, keep it down. Twist it a little bit. Okay, there. There's my eye. My eye stopped here. And to make sure, you see how the top is the V shape? Now with one half twist or turning at 180 degrees with my left hand only. My right hand is, is staying on the top side. You see my right hand? It's not moving at all. I'm not doing any twisting with my right hand. Only with my left hand. See, I started here. And with my left hand only, 180 degrees, you can now see the back that has bump. And to maneuver this, turn it there, upside down. Now in the very first knot, now I'm leaving the tail loose because I feel like it lets more yarn in. The very first, remember I did not twist my right side, only my left inside here and now both sides let me see here's the tail and i'm going to take the yarn and pull it so make sure my both sides okay now notice on the right hand side this is the top the v's and on the left loop are the bumps bumps on the back of the v's now that i have two on my hook, yarn over, pull through the two loops, chain one. And there is my Mobius chain. It's really easier than it looks. Some of my customers says it seems difficult, but although it may seem difficult, but it's really not. It is not that difficult. It's really easier than it looks. And now I'm going to take it even further. Now we're going to single crochet. My chain is half twisted. Here's my tail. I'm moving it away. Okay, now how to single crochet in a twisted chain. Now remember where I began, where the Mobius begins. From the half twist, see the V's? That's the top part of the chain. And here's the back, the bumps. Now, and after that I chained one. Now we're going to single crochet. Notice there's a top horizontal loop or whatever you call it then there's the bump and then there's the bottom there's three elements in this chain looking at the top horizontal you'll notice there's a middle horizontal or ca also called the bump and then there's the bottom horizontal and you need to be specific about this or else the project will not go as desired so to begin this, it's very extremely important you crochet in the top. Single crochet, one, yarn over, pull through both loops, and then you'll repeat. And then all you're going to do is move in a circular flow or a spiral. Remember, it's extremely important to do it this way. See where the bump, and you're going to repeat this. See, that's the beauty of the Mobius twist. And your tail will also be your guide. Do it one more time, 
and then I'll meet you toward the middle. Okay, see how it looks so far? I did a few. Here's my tail. Now I'm going to go toward the middle of the chain, and I'll meet you there. I forgot to point out to you that notice the yarn is going to start to twist. Here's the work so far. Single crochet one into the chain. And I forgot to mention that this is like in, when you make a infinity scarf. Normally, traditionally, you would work in the flat back and forth, but then in the end, you would twist the scarf. But in this case, you started in the beginning. You don't need to work back and forth because it all starts in the round. So now, look how it's twisted. See, it has a flatter appearance. It's starting to twist. Now, as you move along into the circle, just keep twisting. It's going to naturally twist when you move along. So keep with your left hand, keep it in check. Keep your left hand and have it guide your right and just twist toward you. Just a little tip. I'm now at the halfway of the work. This part is flat and it twists. See how it naturally twisted. And see how the tail is. The tail faces towards me. Now it doesn't really, it doesn't have to be very specific which direction the tail faces, but one direction has to face at different places. In other words, you're at the front. The direction of the tail cannot be the same direction as the middle of the row. Let's put it that way. So, here is the middle of the tail. Remember, I am twisting it, pushing it towards me with my left hand. And where I started, here is the middle of the chain. Now, I like to get every single chain. And here's this little bitty chain. I'm going to get that one, too. Okay. And here's the chain where it all began. I'm going to single crochet one in that one, too. Oops. Okay, and there's my chain. Now this one, I'm going to skip this one. The, the one where the tail pulls, I'm going to move along to the next one. And now remember that I mentioned that crochet in the bottom? See, this is where the bottom now becomes the top. That's why I said crochet at the top. I was very specific. And another thing I forgot to point out is that I chained 53 chains. And because now with this one twist, I am now doubling the sides. I'm crocheting on the top side and now on the bottom side. And so 53, that's 106. One oh six stitches, so that doubles it, so that means I don't have to do so many rows. So it becomes one. And the middle of the chain I left alone. The bump, see where this is the bump? The middle is the bump. I am leaving that alone. So like I said, the top well, the bottom becomes the top. So this may take a little bit of practice, but you'll get it. So instead of doing all that back and forth, it's just, it's just a less step. And it's so easy and it's seamless. And when you're working, the tail will be in the middle. And it'll also be your guide. Okay, see where I did so far? Here's the tail. See, that's where my half row began. So whatever I did on the, t on the top, which is now the bottom, and now the bottom, which became the top, it, the same thing happens. So whatever you do on the top, it's also going to happen on the bottom by the time you complete the round. Here's how it looks so far. 
I'm going to crochet the rest of the way. And remember, as you move along with your left hand, guide it and move it towards you so you can move in a spiral motion. You, there's no need to chain one for the next round. You just freely work in a spiral. I'm now close to the end of the row and my tail is on the back side and I'm going to finish it. See my... And often what I like to do, I like to at least because it's sometimes it's hard to put the this the crochet hook in the first in the first single crochet in the back loop I like to put at least single crochet one so therefore it's now easier to work in the next single crochet but let's now take a look you, by looking at the appearance there's the twist right here it has a twisted appearance and it's just that half twist that makes the work all look so easier to do and now if you'd like you can half twist it three times remember move in a 180 degrees twist so there you have it make sure it's a half twist not a full twist 180 degrees not 360 but anyway here is your half twist and after that you are free to do whatever design you'd like and it's really that much easier but anyway thank you for watching